heard that argument before from people who are full of staggering quantities of shit. But also- Hi shitlords, I'm Veer. I've been watching the gun control debate on the drunken peasant stream between Razor Fist, this feller, and Paul, also known as Dr. Robotnik. There were a couple of points made in this video, made by Paul and TJ, which really rustled my jimmies, and I wanted to address them. I'll play the first part for you real quick, and I think you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Are you a gun owner, Fist? I am now, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Good for you. Uh, no, that's cool. I have no problem with you owning a gun. Uh, what what well-regulated militia are you a member of? <laughs> uh, the citizenry of the United States of America. Got it. What? That, what, that well-regulated militia, that one that we don't want to regulate, though, right? We want to we want to deregulate the citizenry of the United States when it comes to guns, right? You understand when that law was written, it was it was actually explained in several texts thereafter, and then. That literal represent literally reading the law actually is not a full portrait of it. I mean, Thomas Jefferson was quoted at the exact same time as saying that the most compelling reason for people to be able to keep and bear arms was as a last resort as a defense against tyranny in the government. Well, as much as I like Razor Fist's response, sadly it's wrong. It's a real penny dropper, but both it and Paul's question rely on a basic misunderstanding of the Second Amendment. I'll do exactly what Razor Fist said you shouldn't do. I'll read the Second Amendment, literally, and I will, as you can see, I have it on screen. A well-regulated militia, being necessary to the security of a free state, comma, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Now, I'm not a native English speaker, and I'm not an American, but I can decipher a simple, simple English st sentence written 250 years ago, reading it literally. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The first part is a supposition that a well-regulated militia, meaning a standing army, is required to keep a state secure. A state cannot survive without having a well-regulated militia. The second is a conclusion. Since we are a state, we must have an army. Since we must have an army, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Simple fucking English. A, therefore, B. Not only that, but Thomas Jefferson wrote about it exactly like you have described. He gave the same rationalization that you've given. Second part is the technology issue, which TJ brings up. No, I there mean, like, uh, look, the Second Amendment was written in a time when the most advanced fucking thing people were carrying around was a fucking musket. No, I mean, do you your, really, your entire do you really think, scenario is when you really, I mean, like, are, are you talked about, no, hold on, hold on, you talked about Thomas Jefferson, you know, another thing he said is that we should rewrite the Constitution constantly, because yep. we shouldn't be slaves to the past, we shouldn't be beholden to some antiquated values that made sense at the time, but maybe don't make sense anymore. And yeah, God damn, it almost sounds like the entire fucking amendment system. And God damn. Honest, Jesus, well, what a revolutionary. And, and hold on, let's be honest. About? Gun people don't no, I'm like saying that Thomas, Thomas Je you're basically enshrining Tom what Thomas Jefferson said, which I don't think he would want. That that uh, was I'm not enshrining. That's one of many many quotes that connote that. If you're talking about you want to talk about other people, George Washington believed so strongly in that he had his own private militia just because he was so <laughs> paranoid that the British would eventually come over and take over his fucking government, or that the other party that was, was a legitimate concern at the time. Okay, they go into other fields, but let's talk for a second about the technology issue before we close off. Besides the fact that muskets used to be state-of-the-art weapons back in the day, yes, they were very inaccurate, and it took a lot of time to reload them through the muzzle, and you could barely hit the side of a barn, as Paul used the phrase. That is why people fought informations back in the day. But the Second Amendment doesn't apply to muskets. It applies to arms. To say that it applies to musket is the same as saying that the First Amendment doesn't apply to your free speech on the internet or to your free speech 
on the phone or on the television or on the radio because all of those things didn't exist back then. It is the same as saying that the Fourth Amendment doesn't apply to your digital communications and documents because they didn't apply back then. It only applies to physical documents which can be physically seized and since digital communication can be intercepted, it doesn't apply to them. For example, it can be copied which is also not seizure. The people who wrote the Constitution put a lot of thought into it, and I suggest you give some thought to the rationale behind the amendments and maybe think why you suppose the first applies to your interwebs, but the second doesn't apply to assault rifles. Links will be in the description. Thanks to the drunken peasants and Razorfists and Paul Robotnik, we get you vape. Ivan Veer, thank you for listening and watching.